This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Calling, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Mr. A.J. Phillip. Mr. Phillip has committed his life to the cause of education and social upliftment of socially and economically disadvantaged children. Thank you for coming to our show, Mr. Phillip, and welcome to all our show. And thank you for all you do to make a profound and meaningful difference in people's lives, and especially for the children thank who you. are the hope of tomorrow. So tell us thank a little you, bit about your... Go ahead, Mr. Phillip. Yeah, my name is A.J. Phillip. I come from the state of Kerala in India. I live in Delhi. I have been a journalist for most of my life and uh, associated with Deepavaliya for the last 30 years. And uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was president of Deepavaliya for about 25 years and now I am the chief executive of Deepavaliya for the last four years. Uh, Deepavaliya is an organization set up by seven, seven South Indians from Kerala. And the purpose of uh, Deepavaliya was to get uh, the poor. Deepavaliya means house of Deepam. Deepam means light, house of light. That is what, so it was set up 40 years ago by seven people in Delhi. Today it is uh, Delhi's largest uh, operational NGO. When I say operational NGO, we have many activities going on in various places in India. For instance, although we are based in Delhi, we have programs running in Delhi, Haryana, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, and Uttarakhand. So this, we have on our rolls about 8,000 students as of now, and we have about 340 employees working on a regular basis for Diwali. Wow. So, Mr. Philip, what inspired you to do this? Why, why, you, why are you doing something so upliftment, upliftment of not our society, but for the whole world you're doing? Your cause is noble. What you're doing is something that we should all cherish, nourish, and nurture. So what yeah. inspired you to do I, this? Uh, yeah, I was born and brought up in a, in a middle-class family. And okay. what brought me to Delhi, what brought me to Delhi was education. So education is what uh, impacted me, what changed my life. So I have a duty and a commitment to give education, to spread the values of education to more and more people. So I find that in India, there are a lot of people who are not getting the benefit of education. That is why our lit literacy rate is very low. So whatever a, little, whatever little a person can do for the upliftment of society, one should do. That is what I firmly believe. And uh, that is the noble purpose for which Diwali has been functioning all these years. Well, very well said. And as I understand, the motto of your organization has been and continues to be every child deserves a chance uh, so what have you done is this an empty slogan or is it more than that yeah see when we started we started the five students and one teacher this was in 1979 and over the okay. last 40 years we have we have been able to educate more than 350,000 children and oh. they would, they got education they, they would not have got the education but for the prevent but for the presence of Deepalaya. And these children were all uh, children living in slum areas. They were very poor and they were uh, living in really slum area conditions. So we have been able to educate a lot of them about, as I said, 350,000 children in Delhi, Ariana and uh, other places. So that is something which we, we, we consider as an achievement. And uh, I must also tell you that we are also in the, in the government sector. For instance, I can tell you a very interesting story about 15 years ago. To, you yes. know, we wanted to develop the habit of saving among women. So what we did was okay. we group formed, yeah, we formed groups of self-help groups of women. Ten women would form one self-help group. What we did was if a woman is able to save one rupee a day, that means if she is able to save 30 rupees, Deepalaya will contribute 30 rupees. So that will make her saving a month 60 rupees. And the condition of women was such that most of these women would not be able to save even five rupees a month. So that was the condition. Today, over the last 15 years, all this, we have about 16,000 women who are members of our self-help groups. At one time, they were all, they were all women. Most of them were illiterate. Today, all the 16,000 women, 
the bank they can check their passbook they know what how much interest has been calculated they know how to organize a meeting they know how to write the minutes they know how to conduct elections and they know how wow. to you know how to start micro enterprises among these 16000 women they have started more than 8000 micro finances small 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 units small businesses they have started so that is something which we have done well uh, mr yes. philips where do you get the money to support the organization like this uh what does does the government give it to you do the ngo gives you to you the philanthropists give it to you how what's the source of your income yeah unfortunately we do not get any money from the government of india or, or from any government what we do is uh, people have been supporting us so have been supporting us for instance we i can tell you about you know one lawyer in delhi this lawyer was started contributing 2000 rupees a m- month for us and over yeah. the years today he is he is giving us nearly 3 lakh rupees that is one example 3 lakh is a big sum for a person to give every month that is what we get and we have for instance last week no sorry last week 1 lakh rupees from a person in the us her husband died and in her his bill the deepalaya should be given 1 lakh dollars sorry 1 lakh rupees so she sent us that rupees just last so that is the kind of support that we get of course we also get wow. support from corporates yeah in india in india private companies big private companies are supposed to do csr programs so they give us right. csr programs we do csr programs for them so that is also one way of uh, source one source of income and we also develop have out the habit of you know enabling people to enable others which means you contribute money to us maybe small amount even those small amounts you know big big, uh, big amount so uh, so mr philip uh, what kind of a challenges do you think that the ngos face in india and uh, you subscribe to the notion the person that you just mentioned who has given so much money as president kennedy once said to whom much is given much is expected it's much more rewarding to give than to make any money yes i think it is more rewarding to give than to you know get and uh, unfortunately right. in india yeah and unfortunately in india many people who have the money they are not willing to contribute they are not willing to give so that is one problem i always say that in india there are you know millions of people who are educated people and if an educated person who a person who is well off if he supports one ch- just that it can transform the country if every educated yes. person every person who has a job person who has uh, who has something to rely on if he supports the education of just one student maybe one related to him maybe a neighbor maybe belonging to a church maybe a, a person belonging to the nearby mosque whatever be the religion or whatever be the situation one person one another person india's education scenario would be vastly different Well, very and well said. The one person, be... yeah, one person can make a difference, and they should make a difference. So, tell me a little bit about the Indian diaspora, the NRI. Can, how they can help uh, in alleviating the challenges that the underprivileged children face in India. When you say underprivileged, that in, uh, you have uh, the children have regards their caste, creed, religion, race, background, and belief. They come from all corners yeah. of India's. a vast country correct yes yeah underprivileged people are uh, you know need to be supported unfortunately the government is has not been you know encouraging the ngo sector the ngos are you know ngos are against the government i think you know this government right. has some such belief so that is not true there are you know many good ngos as there are bad ngos also in india there are millions of ngos some of them may be bad but that doesn't mean that all the ngos are bad i can tell you about the diwali we have this sector for the last 40 years our uh, goal is transparency we do whatever we do it is done in a very transparent manner i can tell you about diwali and why people are trusting diwali is because of the transparency today we have on our roles staff who studied in diwali they would not have got education but for diwali today they are working as as uh, in senior positions in my in my organizations in my organization at least 10% of our staff are from the alumni this is the kind of 
transformation that has happened to the society through us. I won't say that Deepali is a small organization when you consider the overall picture in the country, but what little we can do, we have been doing. So this needs, this kind of organizations need to be supported so that, you know, they can do much for the country. And I believe that, you know, the NRIs, the non-resident Indians can play a significant role by helping, you know, NGOs like us. For, for instance, now I am building a school in one of the most backward regions of India. So according to Where? the NITI which is the center, yeah, it is the according to NITI Aayog, which is the central government organization, the most backward district in the country is NU in Haryana. And in NU, NU is a Muslim majority area. In NU, there is one village called Gusbeti. Gusbeti is the most backward region in the most backward district of India. And there we have set up a school. We set up this school about 15 years ago. We today have about 1,300 students on our roads. Initially, when we started the school, the people were not willing to children, particularly girl children. Today, we have about 45% of our students are from the girl, are girls. Not only that, the demand for school education has been increasing. Although the children, although the parents are very poor, they want their children to be educated. Today, as I said, you know, we have 1,300 students and we are setting up a school building. This building, we, have, we want to construct one building. This building will have about 96,000 square feet. Unfortunately, we have been able to construct only, only the first floor, which is about 33,000 square feet. We, now we are constructing another uh, 16,000 square feet on the first floor. We need to complete this building. We need about, you know, about $1.5 million to complete this particular building. When this building is completed, I can tell you that this will be the school in the whole of New District in Ariana. And we will be Very able well to educate 3,000 students. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the Indian yeah. government does not encourage the India diaspora to help the people because they're, they're sort of a little ignorant and in, a, in some cases they're arrogant. They don't they don't appreciate what the NRIs can help to India to achieve its fullest potential and help people like yourself. So it's a very sad irony, and they need to. They, rather than being a divisive, they need to come together to help achieve their goals. Uh, tell us, uh, you don't have to comment if you don't like to comment, but the fact of yeah. the matter is it's a very, uh, it's a sort of a delicate situation. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about, you mentioned about the girls. Why the girls have so oh, yeah. much uh, dropout rate and what can be done among the girls? And girls are about 50% of the population. They are the best in the world. If you help them, they can do wonders they can make a difference give them some oxygen to breathe and they will make a difference so tell us why there's such a dropout rate and what can be done to alleviate that problem yeah see we we as i said we our school is situated in one of the most backward regions and there the all illiterate our students are first generation students and there the okay. problem is that there the problem is that the Parents are uh, parents believe that once a girl attains the age of puberty, then she should be married off. So they look for right. you know bridegrooms for the daughters rather than sending them right. to education. So what what right. we have been doing is we have been you know convincing them. We have been taking you know people to that place. For instance, recently I took you know a Supreme Court lawyer and uh, a practicing lawyer, a young girl, a Muslim girl. I took her there and introduced them to the girls and parents there. And a little before that, one IPS girl, a Muslim girl, she got into the Indian police service. And she's a very meritorious. I took her to the school. So that I to send their children to school. So when the community workers to their homes, their houses, and persuade them to send their children back to the school. So we are succeeding. Today, there are, you know, children who are in class 9, 10, 11, which means, you know, they are in the puberty period, but they are now attending the class. So over a period of time, this problem will end. Maybe another generation, this problem will be there. <laughs> Very well said. Uh, you, you, you're, doing a, you're doing a great uh, job uh, in order for the girls to, to achieve their potential and get them educated so they could be productive citizens of that nation. And that's very, very important. Yeah. You talked a little bit about the affordability and accessibility of higher education. That does remain India's biggest challenge. What can be done to bridge the gap? Yeah. Unfortunately, during my time, you know, higher education was relatively cheap. 
Now, with the privatization of education, higher education has become unaffordable to an owning majority. This is a bad policy. Earlier, I have a relative. He did his post graduation in medicine. With and his, fee, his monthly fees was only 16 rupees. That means not even half a dollar. That was the kind of fee right. that he paid, monthly fees he paid. Today, a poor man has to study in a medical college, he has to share lakhs of rupees, which he cannot afford. Right. As a result, right. the poor is getting, is deprived of higher education in the country. And uh, the government is not setting up you know, enough colleges. And even where the government has like Jawaharlal and our university, they are now going to increase the fees. If the, if the fees is increased, then the poor would be affected. Mr. Philip, uh, there are a lot of people in the audience are watching you and they love what you're doing. And there are people in India, people all over the world, in the Gulf country, in America, North America, are watching the show. How did they get hold of you? What's your point of contact? And what can they do to help you, support you? What are you doing in, uh, to uplift the, the children and the female and the socially and economically disadvantaged people? Yeah, Deepale is an organization we can seek help from people. If anybody helps Deepalaya, I can assure you that we utilized only for the purpose for which it is it would be raised. And uh, unfortunately, the there are people you know who are willing to give money to set up temples, money to set up most money to set up churches. But few people churches, are willing right. to pay for education of the poor. If right, every right. person is able to give money to educate one person at least. We can, we can transform the country. And as far as Deepalaya is concerned, Deepalaya has a website, www.org. We have a website. We can receive funds from any source in India or abroad. We have the, we have the FCRA account. And we also recently set up a foundation in the US. It is called the Deepalaya Foundation Incorporated in okay. the US. Okay. If anybody gives, yeah, if anybody gives money to Deepalaya, Deepalaya Foundation Incorporated in Houston, the money will reach us and the money will be utilized for the education of the poor. And those who give funds to the Deepalaya Foundation will also get the benefit of uh, tax exemption there. That is what I believe. Yeah, and that initiative so, was the initiative of Deepalaya Friends. Yes. It is so not a Deepalaya US space. Very well said, Mr. Philip. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it the is, people can uh, get is, an IRS a, tax yeah, yes, you so are people right. in And this initiative was taken by some Deepalaya friends. It is not a Deepalaya outfit. It was the initiative was taken by some people in the U.S. And uh, who people who know Deepalaya, people who know about the transparency of Deepalaya, they took the initiative and set up this foundation. And uh, through that foundation, we would like to, you know, do some educational programs in India. At the moment, what I need most is uh, about, you know, $1.5 million dollars over the next uh, two, three years to complete the construction of the building that we have already started. That's your dream. Yeah. Right? Yes. And are you yes, want that is to, my dream. Have you, do you come to United States quite frequently? No, I was there in October last when the foundation was inaugurated in Houston. So that was my third okay. visit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as you know, uh, there's a lot of organization in the United States that can help you to achieve what you what what are you doing in in uh, in, in India uh, and uh, and also the fact that in the Gulf country, uh, especially UAE, Saudi Arabia, and the Kuwait and some other countries, there are a lot of people from from the from the background of the Kerala and other part of the India. They can they, and they're fairly well off. They should be able to help you a little bit. Yeah, I hope so. Thank yeah, you. we get some support. Yeah. So can you can you spell the uh, the name of your organization for the web page so people understand what it is? Because you went too fast for me. What's the name of the yeah. organization again, yeah. Mr. Philip? www dot d palia d double e p a l a y a dot o r g. Okay. Dipalia dot o r g. Okay, so it's a, it's a, so, so for American website. audience, for American audience, I want them to know what it is and they can log on to it and can, and they can also reach people in the organization to, to help you, to support you, what you're doing in, uh, especially 
for the socially economically disadvantaged uh, uh, children. So thank you, thank you very much for all you do to make a difference. And this is Frank Islam. Thank you. you great thank, thank you, Frank Islam, for the for the opportunity that you have given me. Thank you. You are most welcome, sir. And thank you very much for watching. This is Frank Islam wishing you a great week.